I said I'd be back. So I'm going to start off with an overview of the tool chest and um, talk about the construction and some of the options. And then on the next videos, I'm going to go through the dimensioning of the timber and timber requirements and so on. And then we get into making it. So, well, let's open her up and see, so, you know, just one handed, very easy to, to open. The piano hinge works really well and you can, you can hear it close. Um, the size wise, uh, length wise, 910 millimeters, and then depth wise, 460 and height wise, 460. Obviously it ends up higher because you're gonna put it on casters, but the actual carcass is 460 high. Um, I'm gonna go through a cutting list, which is pretty much fixed. The only thing that there is a variable on, which uh, again, I'll go through in more detail, but is the ends, because the ends sit inside the front and back and this whole distance externally has to add up to 460. So if your ply is a different size to mine, and you can get 18, 19 and a half, all different imperial sizes, then you need to adjust the length of your end, either make them longer or shorter to make it up to 460. Um, so, but I'll go through that. Now, the lower part, so the two ends, the front and the back, are in 18 millimeter ply or whatever you've got equivalent to it, and the lid and the base are 12 millimeters. Uh, and that's because we want the lid to be as light as possible and we want the base to be robust. It's doing the most of the work and we want it to have some weight so that when we put tools in the lid, um, there's not that thing where you take a few big heavy tools out of the base, a big plane or something, and then it tips backwards. So, um, this balance works really well. The other thing is the joints on these corners are counterboard. Um, so they're, they're screwed and then plugged over the top and then going to be painted anyway. So actually to have something 18 mil ply to screw into, um, just makes the construction easier and it makes it more solid and you get a bigger gluing area, um, than on sort of a half, half inch, 12 mil metric ply. Um, so that's the reason for that. Now you have got options, you know, you might decide you want to biscuit joint it. Uh, you can you can join it however you want. You know, you've just got to make sure that you plan in the fact that we're going to make it as a rectangular cube and then we're going to cut the whole of the lid off. So what you don't want is a screw where your um, cut line is going to be or cut halfway through a fixing or something like that. So that's just something to be aware of. So that's the overall sizes and that's the... Um, thickness of the materials. Um, the skirt at the bottom and the dust seal around the lid, you can make, um, you actually you can alter the sizes of it, you can alter the bevel on it to whatever you like, um, you can make it of softwood, hardwood, whatever you want, it's going to be painted. Um, I'll go through it in more detail when we get to that stage. Um, the other thing to say is when you do this project, it's quite forgiving in a lot of ways in that, you know, even when you cut the lid off, if you cut the lid off and have to cut it by hand and then clean them up and the edges of your lid and carcass aren't exactly aligned, well, this has got a piano hinge holding the lid on anyway, which means the back of, of is raised, the front here when it meets here. It does meet here, but it sits a little bit higher at the back. Now, you wouldn't notice the angle when it's closed. And because you've got a three-sided dust seal at the top, it hides everything anyway. So from that point, it, it, it's forgiving. Um, now, the other thing is, it's got a built-in stay on the lid. So... An angled piece above the hinge and an angled piece fitted to the carcass below the hinge and if you get your angles right and you can adjust them and test them out as you're fitting them you can then get it so that when you lift it sits at the angle you want it to sit at if it sits too far back it's going to take up too much room it's going to want to topple backwards and also it's going to put strain on the hinge obviously you don't want it too upright either because if somebody knocks it slightly from the back um, it's going to fall forward um, so 
again, we'll come to that when we, when, when we get to the um, fitting of the hinge and putting the stay on, we'll go through it in a little bit more detail. The other thing is when you put the lower skirt on, you don't necessarily need to have big clamps either because you can counterbore those as well. So you can cut them to size, the mitered corners, when you've got everything adjusted, you can dry fit them with the screws. Um, and if you're happy with it, then fit them, put the glue on, screw them on, and then later on, plug over the top of the screw, flush, flush cut that off, and then it's gonna be painted anyway. So as we go through it, we'll go through various options, but, um, but there are lots of opportunities to adjust. The interior you can do as you see fit because we all make different things. We've all got a different tool kit. We've all got different brands and sizes of tools. The, the way I've got it set up is it's got one shallow tray at the top, a deeper tray at the bottom for chisel rolls. And I fitted these flush handles just to make it a little bit easier, but it's very easy to, um, to open and close. And then space in the bottom for putting planes and mallets and other things. Um, and because I use a lot of card scrapers and you're always fiddling around to get them, I just put some little dividers in for different card scrapers. So you can fit out the interior um, however you want. And then we'll put handles on the end for moving it around. And some people will fit a lock as well. So if I compare it with this one, which I made 10 years or so ago, I fitted a lock on that one. This one's only made of half inch ply all around but routed construction on the corners and then it had pins put in it as well and glue and this one's been in various workshops that I've been at and I've had timber on it wheeled it to the machines I've cut wood on top of it I sit on it um, I, I painted it originally with some gloss paint never repainted it and it's it's lasted and works really well. So you've got you've got so many different options as to how you get it to suit you. But the thing is, they are so mobile. You know, somebody said on one of my Instagram posts, "Good, that must weigh a hundred kilos." I don't know what ply they're buying or what tools they're buying because this is this with two tool kits in it. I can push it around. one-handed I can pick it up and lift it you know but if you want to adjust the materials you can do but this works for me